Hi, I'm Sherry McGill, and you're watching Lessons Learned. Welcome back. Today I have three projects for you for No Buy January, where we don't buy any fabric in January, but we look into our stashes and into our scrap piles and make some wonderful things uh, from our sewing room. So as you uh, may have known since you, if you've been watching me for a while, I've been working on this um, ragged flashback flannel quilt. It's a rag quilt made from uh, woolly flannels. And today I'm gonna use some of my scraps to make a gorgeous pillow to match. So, um, don't look at this too long. It's kind of cute. It was on this pillow form. It's a bought pillow. And while I like the way it looks, I don't like this. Don't like that. So, I'm going to donate this pillow cover. It's a nice one. It has a nice canvas back and a zipper. Uh, it is a little bit uh, soiled on one side. Not sure what happened there. I do have a dog. Um, and then uh, there's our pillow form. So what I did to be able to repurpose this pillow form, I measured it. I got some flannel scraps out and I happened to have some cowhide minky. So I'm going to make another pillow to go with my quilt out of this pillow form. So I've measured it already and it's uh, roughly 14 by 24. So uh, I took some of my scraps that I had and I just kind of randomly put some together of different sizes. I could have, I had enough, I could have made them all the same and I kind of wish I would have inserted another one here. But this is um, the opening and I wanted to teach you a little bit about how to do those openings if you don't already know how. So I just did my normal quarter inch seams on my strips after I measured them and made them a half inch wider all the way around. And here um, on the opening, this is just going to be an envelope style pillow, for, pillow cover form, pillow form cover rather. And I uh, used one of my little decorative stitches there to finish this off. I just turned that in a quarter inch twice and sewed that down. And then I did the same here. I turned it a quarter inch and I did about a, uh, that's almost two inches, probably one and three quarter. And I did put my uh, decorative stitch on there, but you can't really see it because I still had my black thread in, which is fine. And I also put an extra one along the edge here to finish it off really nice. So I just overlapped those three inches so that when you stuff your pillow in there, if it bulges out a little bit, it's not going to bulge all the way open. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I, you know, I had this little clip in here measuring three inches. And I'm going to sew a little line of stitching along the very edge there to hold that in place here and here. And then once I do that, I'll put right sides together, stitch all the way around, and we will have ourselves a brand new pillow cover to match my quilt. Hang on. And here's our finished pillow. This is the fake fur side or the minky side. I've just got it propped up against a basket there so you can see. And now I'll show you the back. Got all the colors of our quilt in it and it'll look nice on a bed with the pillow. So if you have any sort of pillow that maybe you got with a couch but you don't like the covers anymore the pillow form that's inside is still very usable so um, sometimes you can actually just recover right over the top of what they covered it with if it's not something that's removable with a zipper or an 
envelope style opening like we did here. So if you got some ugly pillows laying around, get those pillow forms out and make yourself up some new pillows. Um, you could also just use regular quilting cotton. Um, I would suggest maybe uh, ironing on some SF-101 lightweight interfacing to just regular quilting cotton. But uh, if you have a quilt that you've made and you've got some decent sized scraps that you could cover some pillows with, um, it's an easy way to do it. Just put some random sizes of strips of uh, fabric on there on one side or on both sides and it'll match your, your quilt that you made. Okay, on to project number two. Project number two. This will help you to move some of that fabric that's just kind of weird. You don't know where it came from. Maybe somebody gave it to you. Uh, maybe it came in a mystery pack from Soya. And you're kind of like, that's weird. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say too much about this. But there are some gorgeous colors in here. And uh, we're going to make a key fob. And what you're going to need is um, some fabric, obviously, fat quarters, whatever you've got that's at least three and a half by 12. So I have taken a three and a half inch by 12 inch strip and ironed down the edges one quarter inch. I have a one inch strip of batting. This one happens to have a little adhesive uh, made into it. So once I fold this over and iron it, it will stay secure. You can use any kind of stabilizer in here you have. Some leftover pieces of anything that you have uh, with some batting will work. So don't worry, don't think about it too much. It's whatever you got is, is probably going to be fine. So I've just took, taken that one inch strip there and butted it up against that quarter inch fold that I've made and then I'm going to fold it right over and match those sides together and iron that. Okay, there you go. Look at all those gorgeous colors in there. Okay, so now this open edge, I'm going to sew it shut. I'm going to do a 1 8 inch from the edge top stitch at three and a half and I'm going to do the other side as well and when I get that done I may put some more lines of stitching on there. Let's take a look. Okay, so there we are. I think I would like to have a couple more rows of stitching on that. You could certainly leave it like that if you wanted. But I think I want it to be a little more stable with some more stitching. So I'm going to move over a quarter of an inch from my eighth of an inch that I already have. I like that. Looks nice. And I like the three and a half inch top stitching as well. So I have here some uh, key fob hard hardware. It's like a little triangular looking piece of metal. One side has a grip on it and then this part is what holds your your car key fob. So this is going to be pressed together onto the end of your key fob or on, uh, with yeah, your wristlet. So um, what you're going to want to do and since this only has the little teeth on one side is you want to go ahead and put a line of stitching right along the edge here. Otherwise, you could have one side pull out if this didn't engage all the way through like it's supposed to, which can happen. Okay, so now to do this part, we're just going to get it all the way up inside of there so you can fill your fabric all the way up in there and then give it a good mm, don't let your fabrics fall out like I almost did there might be just a little bit on the outer edges that's squeezing out 
but that's okay. Just get it even. Hopefully you can see that, that that's it's just like a 32nd or a 16th at the most on each side of that. Give it a squeeze with your hand and then take a plier of any kind and then cover this up because you don't want to scratch your hardware and really give it a squeeze. But you don't want to bend it up so there's there's kind of a point of no return on the squeezing but just kind of gently squeeze together until you feel like it's engaged like you can't really squeeze it anymore there you go cute nice I like it so now you have your other piece of your hardware in your bag there, I think this pack came from Joann's and it is uh, 15, 12 pieces, 12 or 15 pieces, I can't remember. But you can get them online, probably Amazon. Just look for key fob hardware. So if you want to take your, oops, thought I was being slick there. There we go. <laughs> you know how these are. So there you go. You got a nice little key fob. It's beautiful. And there's nothing weird about it like that. Of course, if you're into weird and you want to get her face right on there, you can certainly make that work for you. Okay, you can also uh, get another little loop and put on here, put some charms. I did pick up some charms. Um, I don't have the proper loop to put those on but uh, I might do that before I get through with this project but I've got these little butterflies and they have a teeny tiny loop on them so if I can find a loop that another loop that I can put on here that will fit both this and that small hole I'll add a charm but you can imagine all the different things that you can do with this uh, to jazz it up you can use decorative stitches on here um, a lot of times we don't use much of our decorative stitches. So there you have it. Another little project you can do with stuff that you already have. So you don't have to go out and buy fabric. You will have to go out and buy these, probably. But we all have batting scraps and fabric sitting in bins. Alright, on to project number three. Alright, project number three. We have a panel here. This is doubled over. There are labels that can be used for the backs of quilts. And then there's just some random little sayings related to sewing or quilting here on that. And there's two more on the other side. So I can make a total of four of what I'm going to make, which includes using a canvas, an art canvas, and some more fabric. So we are going to take these little motifs right here and make them into nice little wall art pieces. So I have already cut this one out and it's approximately seven by seven. It's just barely off um, up and down. It's just slightly taller, but feels more like a square. So I'm going to take that square and configure some fabric around it to frame it and then attach it to the canvas. So let's see how this is going to turn out. Okay, so to frame this um, little center piece out really nice, I want mitered corners. You won't have to do mitered corners especially if you have just an all-over pattern but since this is a tape measure fabric I think it would look really cool to miter the corners so uh, what I'm gonna do or what I've done so far is uh, you fold this in half and find the center and then you do the same thing with your your strips 
Now I've got way too much extra. You do need to have a good inch and a half extra on each side. But I did fold that in the middle. I don't know if you can see my little fold there. And then once I turn that over, and there, there you see my, my center. It's hard to do with one hand. Okay, so there it is. Now, we're going to sew these right sides together, but I have also marked to stop at a quarter of an inch before the end of the little panel piece on all of these, all of these corners. There's one. <laughs> and then I'll do the same down here. And then once I have those two done, then I'll do my side pieces. So my side pieces are going to be like this. Same thing. And you have to be really careful when you start on this second go around with these side pieces. Not to, not to sew into where you've already sewn up here. You want to start right at that dot. And then what's going to happen is your... If I can do this, it's going to look like this when you're all finished. So I just think that's that's going to look so nice. Like that. Pretty cool, huh? So let me do this and I am using since this was 7 inches, I'm using 4 inches on each side that gives me 15 inches. So there's plenty to wrap around the 12 by 12 canvas that I'm using. So let's get one panel done and see how it looks. So I'm over here at my ironing board table and I just uh, accidentally deleted the footage of me gluing this down. But basically I just took the edges and put some little glue drops around the edge, one at a time, fold it over, one at a time, fold it over. Worked with the corners some, which were a little bit tricky. And I was using this little glue gun and it turned out great. What do you guys think? I love it. So cute. It's very lightweight. You could put a hanger on it, attach a hanger on it, or you may even be able to just do one of those thumbtacks and just, you know, let it sit on a thumbtack because it's really lightweight, super lightweight. So I have three more to do, but I'm not going to do those on camera. But I do want to talk to you a little bit about uh, some other options that are similar to this if you don't have this kind of a scenario in your stash. Okay, so here's another small panel that I have. This is probably about a 10 by 10. And I bought this panel just for this deer. I thought he was so interesting. Um, I think what I might do with him in the future is kind of do some um, mosaic or... I'm not sure. I want to do some like little strips of fabric on him and some thread, thread art maybe and put him in a frame of some kind or a wall hanging. And then um, here are some of the other ones that are in this one. Uh, let me see if it has a name. Yes, this one is Kate Finley. Raptious Limited for Blank Quilting Down in the Woods. So it's a panel with Down in the Woods is the name. There's a fox. I didn't care for all of them, but uh, that deer stuck out to me when I saw it on Soya. They were doing a panel sale for um, Balthazar's Bazaar, I think it was. Wasn't that October? I think it was. But uh, you could do that with these. And then um, a children's room theme would be cool. I have these that are, there's four different motifs on it. And that would make really cute um, canvases on a, on a children's room wall. And then also I got this a few months ago from Ruby Star. Um, you guys may remember it, but it's got these huge butterflies on it. And I was gonna show you this one on a canvas, but I couldn't decide exactly how to do it because um, it has all these other little motifs around it. 
and I didn't know if I should you know include all of those and make it huge because this is probably well it's probably 22 inches wide right here or maybe more because this is the width um, so anyway I want to put that on a canvas sometime and I also maybe want to um, put batting behind it and you know outline some of the figures on here so just go through your stash of panels and see what you have that might be um, appropriate for putting it on a canvas. Now I did have a little bit extra work with mine putting the borders on, but that was kind of fun. And uh, it took me a little bit longer to do the mitered corners, but you know, it's a small project. And I will do the other three. I probably won't do them today, but uh, in the future you will see them. So, um, I hope these three projects will help you to get through No By January by looking through your stash and seeing what you can do with some of your fabrics, especially some of your smaller yardage that you have, and even scraps. So, um, take a look, see what you got, see what you can do. Those little canvases aren't expensive, and the No By January is mainly about buying fabric, you know, just mindlessly buying fabric, which... That's what we're trying not to do this month. So I hope these projects will give you some cool ideas. And please send me your pictures of some of the things that you've done that are similar like this for uh, Finish It Friday this week. Okay, have fun and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.